Hey everyone. So I got a email that I am going to respond to. It's kind of long. And so I wanted to read the whole thing and respond as I went along because I think a lot of you will want to hear this. As always, I'm going to do this anonymously. Dear Suzanne, I feel silly saying that you've changed my life because how many times a week must you hear that? <laughs> I have to laugh. Well, I don't know that I hear it every week, um, but I definitely do hear it and it never gets old. But you have. I started following your work after reading the flip side of feminism on a whim and have read everything else you've written voraciously. It is in no small part due to your work that I have become an object of confusion to everyone I know. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Who wants to be like everybody else, right? I am a stay-at-home mom with a PhD in a hard science from Harvard. Obviously, my life isn't perfect. We live in a high cost of living area on one income and like many millennials have been boxed out of the housing market. I'm going to come back to that. But it is way, way less stressful than any other parent I know. Instead of playing frantic games of rock, paper, scissors with my husband to figure out who has to miss work when a child invariably develops a fever at 3 a.m., I get to keep my babies home in PJs with homemade soup. That is when they get sick, when they get sick, which is a lot less frequent than during daycare days. I feel like I have stumbled onto a cheat code for motherhood, and sometimes it's hard not to burst out, just quit your job, to every stressed out working mom of a sleep-deprived, badly disciplined child I know. I'm going to pause there for a second. I know that's hard to hear, and I know that's, um, you know, depending on what your situation is, um, you may feel as though that isn't accurate or fair, but I think it is a well-known and understood reality of the life of a stressed out working mom of young children that nobody wants to talk about as usual. And I can see where her having gone from one world to the other and seeing that it can be done. And not just that it can be done, but what wonderful things await you on the other side when you do do it. So the whole just quit your job feeling that she has must be very, very real. Because her situation isn't um, all that different from a lot of people's. She, as she pointed out, um, cannot at this point, afford a home. So they're, they're now going on just her husband's income for the time being, and clearly they're renting. And she's going to hear from all of her contemporaries how horrible that is and how dumb that is and how wasteful that is with your money because you're just renting. And this is a perfect example of how millennials monetize everything. Everything's about the bottom line instead of what you're gaining in exchange for um, going after more money, let's say. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to let me keep going here. I'm sorry for rambling, but I want to ask you some other thoughts or ask you about some other questions and thoughts now that you're back to your podcast. One, I am so excited that you're kicking off a parenting series with your husband. One of the things I've been dying to hear more about is your advice on what to do after making the decision to stay home. Um, okay. So that's, that's one question. I'm not, although I'm not sure. I can't really answer that because I'm not sure exactly what you're getting at, what to do after you make the decision to stay home. I mean, there's a lot of different things I could say about that. So I don't know which thing you're talking about. The second thing you asked was about this trad wife concept that's blowing up on TikTok and YouTube. I imagine a lot of your readers have stumbled upon this content, which has more of an emphasis on homemaking slash female submission and not only glamorizes a particular aesthetic, but in some areas can almost have a fetish fetishistic quality to it. I would love to hear more of your thoughts on this. 
and where you think the voices in this movement may be right or getting something wrong. You know, I think it's just definitely, uh, it's a response to um, the fact that we've gone overboard in the other direction and being home at all is, is either frowned upon or um, considered something that's just impossible to do. And if you do do that, that's a bad choice, yada, yada. So there's just a group of people who want to scream out on the other side and show an extreme version of um, what I guess some people do when they're at home, which is very, I don't know how many of you are aware of this trad wife movement, but if you see any reels or whatever on social media, they look very much like a traditional housewife and they are caricatures of what you saw on TV in the 1950s where, you know, the woman's strictly in her role, in her place, and does not veer outside of that. And um, it's just very, it doesn't feel realistic. Um, It feels like a strong statement um, that, I don't know, doesn't need to be made. I mean, if you live a traditional life and you're happy with it, just do it quietly on your own. You don't need to come out and make it um, such an extreme caricature of something that really never was. I don't think that's realistic. Um, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just more of a practical person and I'm just more real, um, about what it really looks like behind the scenes. So the idea of donning on an apron and heels and putting your hair in a certain way and smiling all the time, I mean, that's, that's just not real, you know? So, you know, it's, it's it's fine. I don't really pay attention to it. I guess is the is the long answer to your question. Um, and then this last one really goes back to the money aspect of of living on one income. Um, any advice on how happy at home moms could evangelize, for lack of a better term, to a stressed out working mom who doesn't see a path forward? as a stay-at-home mom, mostly due to financial fears. I've heard what has almost become a cliched refrain so many times, but you can't make it on one income anymore. That I think people just say that without doing the math or really thinking it through. Case in point, my husband makes 130000 a year, which doesn't go far where we live. I want to make sure that I stress that, where we live. Because $130,000 in Wichita, Kansas, I don't know where she lives, this, this gal, um, is not the same as in Massachusetts. So what you cannot just go based on salary alone. There are just too many other factors and geography is a big piece of that. But I have a hard time imagining anyone chastising us as financially irresponsible for having children. If we both, if we each made $65,000, thus totaling the same, which I think was an excellent point. In other words, it's not really about the amount that they live on. It's about the fact that she's home. And funny enough, while everyone warns me that a few years out of the workforce in my 30s will have a big effect on retirement savings, true enough, I don't recall anyone warning me about the even bigger effect that taking time out to go to grad school in my 20s would have. I guess getting a PhD is worth the sacrifice, but raising kids isn't. Um, Okay. Anyway, I'm very excited about your upcoming podcast. And if you happen to have the time of spare words, anything related to this, I'd be happy to hear it. Okay. Um, So, yeah, I just. it's with with request try that again with um respect to your question about evangelizing to stressed out working moms so i'm of the firm belief that i do not proselytize unless asked um i mean in my personal life i would not tell a friend or family member or neighbor or anyone what to do or how to do it differently unless they specifically asked, which I might add is why a lot of times people don't ask me because they know I'm going to tell them, um, you know, what I think, not what they want to hear. So I don't often get asked. And plus, a lot of people already know what I think about different things because I'm so vocal. But yeah, I would not go there. Um, If I know it can be really, really difficult if you're in the same, you know, if you're hanging out with another friend who's doing it differently, and she is commenting on these things, and you know, the truth and that you could technically help her if she asked. And like, it's the hardest thing ever to just be quiet, been there, done that. I completely get it. But yeah, I would zip it unless specifically 
asked. And another thing is, I think that when you're just living your life differently than she is, or they are, whoever these people are, it's going to be really obvious that you're doing things differently and that you're happier and that you're calmer and that you're, you know, what I, I think just modeling it goes really far. You really don't need to say anything. So that would be my response to that. As far as also going back to, I wanted to comment about this renting thing. I really want to stress that there's just too much focus, in my opinion, on having to buy a home immediately upon graduating from college or even right when they people get married and that there is plenty of time to do that and to save up enough money for a down payment, for example, but not to just jump into that because of an investment. You know, it's an investment and renting money is throwing it away. I know I already said it, but I'm going to say it again because I'm hearing this constantly. And it's, I don't think I've ever, you know, been said anything about it yet. Um, But we're going to be talking more about money on this podcast going forward. I'm going to have a series called Money and Marriage, and we're going to get into all these these money details. But yeah, that's just my first thought there is be be confident that what you need to do to have a comfortable, calm, conflict-free zone, whatever you have to do financially to make that happen, do it. And do not worry about your family members and your friends who are telling you that you're an idiot because you're not investing. That's especially millennials. And I don't know about Gen Z yet. I think we're still watching out for that. But millennials for sure have so many bad ideas about money and investing. It's not even funny. We're not going to get into that today. But they're the last people that you want to take advice from as a rule if it's... um if the value system differs, especially from yours. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, Wish I could call you by name on the air here, but um, on the air, I'm not on the air. Never mind. On this podcast. I used to be on the air. This started, I don't know if you guys were with me way back then. It started three years ago, or has it been four years now as a local radio show? And then they, that went belly up and I kept the podcast piece of it. Um, but yeah, I've um, sort of decided I'm no longer going to be using first names or locations or anything anymore, mostly because I got an email from someone for whom I, I said too much. And um, I think I did use her first name and she was concerned that her family members would hear all of that. And so she asked me to to delete that, which I did. And I just decided going forward, I'm just not going to use names at all or cities or anything. But rest assured... I hear from people all over the country, sometimes outside of the country, but um, mostly inside the country. And um, yeah, it's given me a really great um, perspective on what's going on in different areas of the country. That's my favorite part about that, Um, about receiving emails, I mean. So keep them coming. Suzanne at the SuzanneVankerShow.com. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.